Hey guys, at Angel. Uh, I was having some trouble with YouTube, and luckily that's not happening tonight because it just popped up for me. Um, so that means we are actually live. Um, if you guys are having issues with Google, YouTube, what have you, um, there are definitely some glitches that are going on because starting August 1st, their um, Google Hangouts, like having a panel is going bye-bye on August 1st. So I think because they're maybe demantling stuff, it's that's part of why it may be glitching. I don't know, but it's a pain in the butt. And by the time August 1st comes, then like in most of our cases, in order to be able to have panels, um, we will be doing what's called Google Suite. But more on that later, let me do some shout outs. Not very many people because it was not showing up on my homepage. So if anybody looked, they probably thought I canceled the show. So it's going to be a matter of you guys sharing it as far as people that subscribe to my channel hopefully they have the bell notification on if you don't and you're watching it this after the fact um if you will be sure to subscribe and hit the bell you should get a reminder however there's yet another chance that you won't get that either um but maybe i think once you're paying for a service like what we're gonna have to do with Google Suite, then it'll probably work just fine. <laughs> so we have Albert, Irish Albert on panel and my dear friend, Choctaw Girl. Um, a lot of you guys know that her name's Lori, so you can call, call her either. Um, and let's see who we've got in chat. We've got that bitch Pearl. <laughs> that just kills me every time I say it. Susan Yay. Hey, Jake Jonas. I hope you're feeling better tonight and that you're not feeling as bad as you were last night. Thanks for coming. Susan Yay. Uh, Butter. Hey, Butter. And I think that's it. Uh, well, wait a minute. Let me. Okay. I am on live chat. You guys, reminder to be sure that you're on live chat. Um, or you you really, oh, well, good, your temperature's down. That's good. Um, I'm glad that your temperature's not still high. There's nothing worse than being sick and having a fever in the summer. So that, that, that just sucks. Um, let me do this really quick. Okay, well. Tonight's show, I think that the best thing that I can do, um, if somebody has not read the description below, I'm going to go ahead and read that to you. And then we will kind of go into the different aspects of what a soul contract is. What does that mean? So let me go ahead and read what I typed up as the description number one this is not a religious debate because this is you know religion and politics are never a, a good mix so this is also i want to say this before i continue um soul contracts are thought to be created um with with and in direction of God. And and some people will even say the Christ consciousness. So this is not a something that if you listen to this and you're like, oh my God, they're saying there is no God. No, that isn't what it's about. It is no. simply about, and you'll understand more as we get into it. And for a lot of people, it will kind of resonate resonate and others may be very tied into religious dogma 
as I like to call it. And it, it's just something they can't or won't want to wrap their head around. Um, if you don't believe in reincarnation, you're totally not going to like, this won't resonate with you, okay? But I do think it's an interesting topic and it's one that Lori does as well. Albert must think it might be a little interesting because he came too. Yeah. Uh, I did send a link to Spirit Wolf. Um, so hopefully, you know what? Let me go and tag her. So she she may have looked and gone, oh, something may have gone on. And um, it may think that the show isn't on because it wasn't showing up. So here is what my description says. Um, this is not a religious debate. However, I have my own systems of belief, much like all of you guys do. However, a very interesting topic for discussion, even a friendly debate, is the idea that we have chosen or and our creator has chosen a set of things we agree to before we come here, along with free will, of course. I not only was shown my soul contract when I had my near-death experience, but I simply feel and remember it with every deja vu and quite a, a lot of other things too. With each good or bad thing that happens within my own life as it is happening, I've always been aware that everything happens for a reason. More than most, I would say, I've been through some really hard things. I've always had choice, free will, and yet I was meant to do this life this way. I've always ran through this thing called life with the feeling that I needed to experience a million things and not enough time to do them in. I've always educated myself with school and in knowledge on just about every topic you could imagine, as if I had to get it all in. I've always been called an old soul by all of my friends and when I was little, all of my parents' friends. I never had a lot that I wanted to learn from my peer group. Adults were always way more interesting to me, more intellectual and full of wisdom. Before you entered this physical time and space, your soul made an agreement. Before you came into human form, soul had a specific purpose or destiny that it had agreed to fulfill. This destiny was written and is your soul contract. Your time, date, and place of birth are no accident. The family you were born into was specifically chosen for you, by you. Certain people are destined to come into your life to help you heal something, either from a past life or a previous one. No matter what happens in your life, it is in order to help you evolve to a higher state of consciousness. Death is not a given date or time, yet it is still part of your soul contract. It more resembles a breath in when you finally realize whatever it is that you need to realize in order to move back into spirit form and breathe out in order to leave or to die. But I didn't want to make it too morbid, but I just did. Okay. <laughs> you were sent here to a dimension of Earth at a specific time and place with special purpose. One thing that is not predetermined is free will and choice. Life is full of choices. We all have free will. We are all in charge of that destiny thing, and we all have a choice as to how it goes. But more on that at showtime. Would you like a soul contract reading? Okay, now that brings me to just tell you that I do past life, like reincarnation type readings. And I also can talk to you on a psychic level more about what your possible soul contract could have been and why you might be experiencing certain things in your life or certain patterns 
that even you know don't seem to ever lead to anything that's positive. So in many cases, it is the bad things that happen to us or the types of people sometimes that we choose to be around that can cause us the inability to move past these certain lessons. So that is the topic of what we're <coughs> talking about tonight. Hey, Irish Reaper man, I just pulled chat back up and Irish Dragon Lady, hello, beautiful. Hey, Rainbow. I love it when she does the little rainbow. That always makes me smile. Um, and if anybody else is watching and wants a shout out, type in chat and I will shoot you a shout out. And as far as anyone else watching, it's probably a hater. But we don't have any room for that because we're breaking that contract. Okay. So to kind of give you an explanation a little bit, and I'll do a whole other show on the Akashic Records or Akashic Records, um, because that is thought to be believed to be, some people will call that the Book of Life. Um, like within Christianity, people are often taught about this book that contains everything. Hold on one second. What, baby? Okay, baby. Enjoy your art. Okay. The Akashic Records, again, have also to some people are known as the Book of Life where in, in many cases, people believe that when they pass away, uh, some different religions think that when you get to heaven's gate, that you'll be presented this book of your life and you will have to go through with the person in charge <laughs> and go over the good things as well as maybe the bad things you did. I don't think that anybody is devout of having done things that they're not proud of in their life. Um, so it would make sense that maybe you would have to kind of review that. However, the Akashic Records, which does vary a little bit from that, is said to be the records that has all of the information about everything in the universe, all of every action of every person, animal, anything that has happened, it is in the, it's believed to be in the Akashic Records. Now, I'm not telling you you have to believe in that, but I am telling you this is one aspect of what definitely would be consider the paranormal because it isn't normal to a lot of people that might might be watching or might be the first time that they've ever heard of it. But another cool thing that I also had read was about <laughs> the crystal skulls. Okay. Skulls in in most of you guys who are in the paranormal paranormal know that I've done and talked about crystal skulls a lot. There's one sitting right there. Well, I'll let you look at it a little bit more. Now, what is believed, now this is not one of them, but there's a book called The 13 Crystal Skulls. Also, I've seen several shows on History Channel about it and in, in lots of other places too. And it is believed that there are these 13 crystal skulls that store memory, much like a, a quartz crystal stores information on computers, or at least they did way back when computers were first um, discovered, that, that these crystal skulls hold all of the knowledge, which kind of also Hello, RV Charity Drive. Thank you for stopping by. Um, it is thought that when brought together, all of 
the they they believe that the crystal skulls are the record keepers. So to me, that also kind of sounds like the Akashic records, but that we don't know how to access the information. Now, how would it be so unbelievable if you were to say 60 years ago about computers, nobody would ever have believed it, okay? 1920s, 1910s, 1800s, nobody would have ever believed that we could store information on a quartz crystal. Nobody would have thought that computers and internet would be a thing. They would have told you that you were crazy or you watched too much or read too much science fiction because clearly they didn't have TVs back in the 1800s, okay? But just like nobody thought we could fly, nobody thought we could, um, or go to the moon. It's one of those things that me personally, and I definitely know Lori to be the same, and probably even Albert, that it is the things that we don't or have yet to be able to prove scientifically that makes it the hardest for people to believe. But it doesn't mean that it isn't true. We have just yet to be able to prove the hypothesis for the argument of that thing, okay? So just go into this with an open mind, not telling anyone you have to believe this, but it is a very interesting, it's a very interesting conversation to be had. Um, and I want to, I'm going to start out by giving you an example of somebody, no, actually I'm going to give that example in a second. And I guess I'll kind of start at the, the beginning of what a soul contract is. A soul contract is also sometimes referred to a lot of people, um, you know how you have moments, number one, you have moments of deja vu, where all of a sudden you're like, I've been here, I've done this exact thing. It almost feels like you've done it, this exact same thing. And then as quick as you have deja vu, it goes away. And other things, um, that would indicate that you have possibly been here and done this before are things like irrational fears. Like you might have a fear of water, even though you have no reason to be. But in a past life, you may have jumped into the water or into the lake or gone into the ocean when your parents told you don't go near water and then you drown. So then when you come back in this lifetime, you're meant to learn certain lessons regarding that. So it is somewhat the belief that through coming here, through reincarnation, that each time we come, we learn or we sign up for different things. Um, Rainbow is saying she has a fear of bridges and falling while I'm on it. Well, that's a really good example. Um, having this irrational fear that, that doesn't make any sense or a fear of heights. Um, there are many different things that people have these really irrational fears of. And some of this kind of ties into that. So it is believed that after we, we live our lives and we die, and as so not to offend anybody who's like Buddhist or any other religion, we're going to discuss God as being source, the source energy, our creator, the creator, the architect of all of everything. And that when we we pass away and it's time for us to come back we enter into 
what is referred to as a soul contract. Um, therefore, it's not all about predestiny, okay? It's, it's not saying that everything is predetermined, but yet in a way it is. But depending on the choices you make and the free will you have could depend on how that works out. Your time of death um, is also said to be in that contract, but not the exact date and time because it is only through the realization that once you feel like you've experienced everything in this lifetime that you agree to in this soul contract before you came here, that you then basically are ready to go and you go back to that energy. Hey, Alice, good to see you again. Welcome back. So, a soul contract is simply a belief system that with every everything positive and negative, um, we have entered into this before we ever got here. So I have always looked at things glass half full, okay? No matter what is happening in my life, I can always find a way to make it, hey, Nancy, I can always find a way to make something positive of it because I always know that that I've learned something from that. And wow, I signed up for this. Well, there are reasons for that. Sometimes we continue to keep going through the same thing because we just can't seem to learn the lesson. Hey, Shelly. Hey, sweetheart. Um, Irish Dragon Lady also has a fear of bridges and diving boards, okay? These are, are all really good examples. Um, so in a sense, wouldn't it make sense? Hey, Jen TT, um, a lot of people are having internet issues. It, it would make sense that when we have some of these fears, that there may be something deeper to that, okay? Um, Pearl can very specifically, um, you know, she's not on here to talk about it, but is it Elise rather than Alice? I'm so curious, now I, I need to know. Yeah, Elise, yeah, Elise. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I would love to be sure I'm saying your name right. That's super important to me. So I believe and I know that Pearl and I in particular and Steve-O have done a life together and it wasn't all that long ago. In fact, it was definitely like our last incarnation, okay? So it is Elise. Okay, great. Awesome. I love the spelling. I love it when people have names that are spelled like totally different than what you would expect. So the way that, okay, she remembered it. And it also the thing about that is that we come back to do lifetimes with the people that we've done lifetimes with before. So also there was a thing with water in a bridge and like Pearl and I went through this whole conversation right like sometime into the early fall or late summer um last last year about that thing like and again yeah I'll never be allowed to drive no Steve sort of might have been responsible for maybe kind of how we all died so you know um but mm -hmm. have you guys ever met someone that you meet and you're like oh i've totally done a life with you or you're so familiar yeah like yeah. lori and i when we met in person 
it was like we'd known each other forever. Yeah. It, it really was. And so, like, if you guys ever um, come across someone that you meet that it's like they are not a stranger to you, you have probably done a lifetime with them. Furthermore, you possibly could have entered into a soul contract regarding that person. So here's one example. Adolf Hitler, okay? There have been some very world-renowned spiritualists and psychics that have done past life readings on Adolf Hitler. And at one time in one of his lifetimes, he was a, a very, well, you can probably figure out, well, it would be probably more than one, but he was a ruler in Rome, all right? And he had um, clearly the Israelites and the Jewish people as slaves. And then, you know, we all know the story of the Exodus of when the Jewish people were freed and it made him very angry to lose what he perceived to be his property. So at that time, he could have just reconciled it and been like, well, okay, not that you would have said it is what it is back in those days, but it is what it is. But instead, he vowed that he he would he was going to get back at them and in saying that he created a continuum so when he was incarnated into the life that he lived he had this hate for anyone like well it, the jewish people the Polish people, I mean, you guys probably all know the story of all of the people that Adolf Hitler hated, but he most he very much wanted to extinguish the Jewish people. Whether he knew on a conscious level, because most of these contracts are so ridiculous and crazy, you would never think that you agreed to them. But for whatever reason, you did. So he tried to extinguish an entire race of people or a religious sect of people that he did what he did. Because if you think about it, he was very, he, he also, by the way, was one that was seeking out the 13 crystal skulls and many, many other occult items so that is kind of one case of where had he changed how he felt about that he could have changed the outcome of what he decided to do in the next life that he came in on um but it it came on the heels of believing that he owned those people and they escaped in his mind. And so he was going to extinguish them. I don't know whether or not he had any conscious memory of that past life, but he absolutely sought out many occult objects and things all over the world, which would lead me to believe that maybe he did have, whether it was a, uh, a psychic medium or somebody that explained this to him or he just one day decided i want to kill all these people so rainbow said her youngest child is an old soul and i can tell he's been here before see that's kind of the thing have y'all not mm -hmm. met people that you're like wow you're an old soul like i mean lori albert yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Y'all are like, is she talking to Chad or is she talking? Um, <laughs> yeah. This is all new for me, Kat. Remember. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Um, I remember to speak up. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. It's like, 
Hello. Um, so spirit walker, you're told that a lot. Well, lots of times that is how it is. A lot of people will grow up being told, wow, you're an old soul. And I always felt like an old, like, and then there's the people who definitely feel like they've been here, done this, got the t-shirt, and they feel like they've done this many times. So they seek out when they're young, they seek out adults, information, things like that. So out, um, Elise says, you know, Kat, I feel like I lived in Germany during World War II. I don't know what side of the spectrum I was a part of. Well, that's that's kind of very interesting. And, and there are people that, like, they really resonate with the time period. Like, the 1920s were absolutely always, it just intrigued me. And there was a reason for that. But there were other periods of time that I have also been very pulled to historically. Like, I'm going to ask Jake this question, all right? Jake, you said that you really liked history. Is there any particular time period in history that you find that you're super drawn to? Like, I was also really drawn to the Civil War era and sort of the way life was in the 1800s when people were settling in the United States Hey, Callie. Oh, it's so weird. I, I was thinking about you while I was getting ready for this show tonight. And I was like, you know what? I bet Callie completely resonates with this and knows all about this. So it's really funny that you came in tonight. So I'm really glad that you did. Um, Callie should come on yeah yeah Callie you should come up you should come up here uh because I bet you know a lot I bet you know quite a lot about this um so World War II Jake said um in Tombstone okay basically at least that's kind of the same thing like I'm obsessed with westerns like when they had the small pioneer towns and the railroad was building and that year when there were saloons and brothels and in all of that i cannot get enough of watching that so there are definitely time periods that like i'm personally drawn to um and so um jake you're drawn to world war ii and your mom and dad snuck in the Navy at 16 to fight Nazis. Ended up fighting in the Pacific Theater. Wow, that's really cool. So mm -hmm. you're drawn to it more because of uh, your mom and dad. Or, you, you know, you see, those, those are the kind of things that totally fascinate me. Um, and Rainbow said... Um, her son knows a lot about the 70s and 80s bands like Queen and she believes he was killed as a teenager back then okay see these are the things that like what she's saying she's a parent of and sees this like obsession of the bands and the music in that era and so you know that, that very well could be um, what that is. Um, and I would say the one I'm most, like, I really am obsessed with it, the, the 1800s pioneer like, like days. Um, <laughs> Earl's like, I hate Westerns. Now I'm not talking like gun smoke and like, <laughs> I'm, I'm I talking, do <laughs> you know, like I, I don't mean that kind of Western. I'm talking like, okay, what's the name of the show on the Hallmark channel uh, that Lori Laughlin was in is well, wasn't cause she got <laughs> big from that. Um, but like, I am so drawn to it and I, I know well, now keeping in mind, I've done past life regression. I've had past life regression 
done on me. So there are several lifetimes that I do know about because I work with light workers and energy workers. And because of what I do, I have always been drawn, and this is an interesting thing, I've always found my way to people who believed in all of these things that are outside of the normal range. Okay, like all of my friends in the paranormal, like Albert and Lori and Callie and Pearl and and so many other people. Um, I end up finding my people, so to speak, my tribe, you know, and they, I said this to Lori today. I, I told her, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And this happened to me in high school. I really didn't understand my psychic abilities. Um, if you guys don't, haven't known me for a long time, you won't know this story. But when I was little, okay, when I was seven, I had a precognitive dream that my aunt and uncle and all of their children, my cousins, were going to die in a plane crash. Um, now, I had my terrors as a child, so my, my parents thought I was having like that. And they said, no, you had a bad dream, baby, and they took me back in bed, and I was panicked. I remember like, are they really like gonna make me go back to bed? Like I remember this and I remember thinking, having this total foreboding feeling about this dream. It's like it was different than other dreams that I had as a child. The next morning I woke up and I, cause I like stayed awake for, for a while that night. I didn't want to go back to sleep because I didn't want to see, you know, I didn't want to see that again. I woke up and I heard my mom crying like hysterically in the other room. And I ran in there and my mom turned and said, my aunt Kay and my uncle and all of my seven cousins. And yes, I can prove this. It's like on record, not making it up that for my haters um they all died um, my uncle paul was a dentist and he also they had their own plane and they came upon bad weather coming back from ski vacation and the air traffic controller gave them the wrong coordinates and they ran in they flew into the side of the mountains and they were all killed oh man so my parents, like my mom looked at me, my dad looked at me, I looked at them and it was like, uh, but nobody said anything, okay? Like I was brought up Catholic. So I think it was kind of one of those things like, okay, she saw this, but what are we gonna like, what do we say to her? Well, I guess the choice was nothing, which freaked me out even more. So when I was in, as I was growing up and I started to keep a diary, I started to write down all of the precognitive things that I would think about and then happened. And when I got into seventh grade, my parents and I went to Hawaii because I have a lot of family member that family members that live in Hawaii that lived in Michigan, but they'd go to Hawaii in the winters in Michigan to get away from, they, I think they call them snowbirds. You know, they, they owned a restaurant in Michigan. And so they went, they'd go to Hawaii in the cold season. So everybody, it, it, it was just, it was like, when I went away that summer, okay, I know where I was going with this. When we, when we went away on that trip, um, we had one of my friends and she'll still to this day, she'll come in even, talk, she would talk about it on panel. Um, she read my diary and my diary of course was filled with 
I don't know what's wrong with me. Why am I seeing all of these things? Why is this happening? I know when the phone's going to ring. I know when this person's going to fall off their skateboard. I know that this person's dog is going to die and so on and so on and so on. Well, she read it and in true teenage mean girl fashion. She told everybody at school about it. And I lived in a small town in Texas that is the Baptist Bible Belt. So you can probably imagine what I was called was a witch. Now, I didn't want to be called that. I didn't know that that was the name of somebody who, and it was definitely meant in a negative way. And it spread all around junior high. It was the summer before I went into seventh grade. So I had to live with this, not only through the seventh and eighth grade, but all the way through high school. Many people I grew up and went to high school with know about this. And it was a hard cross to bear because everybody then was afraid of me. At first they started inviting me to sleepovers and we would do like, why does a feather stiff as a board? Does anyone remember that? Where you would put two fingers under the person and everybody else would, and you literally could lift them up with two fingers. Okay, I might have just aged myself, yeah. but that, that was a thing. Okay. I won't say it anyway. <laughs> yeah, you go ahead. You know what I'm talking about. So it was kind of like, I was the party joke, but I didn't know it because I believed much like now in the best of everyone. But then when it came time for school, they were putting notes on my locker. They were drawing in marker saying I was a witch and it, it traumatized me so badly that I swore I would never listen to anything else that I was shown or anything as far as being able to do anything psychically. I'd shut it down. I didn't want anything to do with it. I thought there was something evil in me. I thought there was something bad about me. I just wanted to be like everybody else. But in the long run, that ended up being a really cool thing because I didn't really resonate. Like, I was popular in high school because I was an athlete and my parents were rich. Not because like, you know, like there are different reasons you're popular in school. And if your parents had money where I grew up, you were popular by default. Okay. Cause people wanted something from you. And I was always willing to give it. I give away my toys, my dolls, my whatever to people that, that didn't have it. And I would give it to them. So my freshman year in high school, I would, no, my sophomore year, I was at my locker and this guy came and shut my locker door. And I'm like, what the hell? And who is this guy? It was someone I had never seen before. And he said, you want to know why you have the abilities you have? And I'm like, what did he just say? <laughs> why did did I hear that right? He said, you need to come somewhere with me on Saturday. And I'm like, okay. Okay, well, that was kind of dumb if you think about it. But And I didn't know who this guy was. He was new at the school. And so that Saturday, he took me to one of those conference rooms. And I told Lori about this. At the, or, well, I don't know if I've told Lori about this before or not. Um, but he took me to this thing on how to develop your psychic skills if you believe that you're psychic. I don't actually know what the name of the thing was, but it was something like that, opening up your third eye or something like that. And that's back when you, it was hidden, which is why it was in a back conference room at the Holiday Inn. And we went to this for like two and a half months. And I would just say I was going on a date with so-and-so, and then we would go and do this. Never to hold my parents, well, until later. And I started to learn more that what I had wasn't as, like this evil thing. It was, a, it was a gift, and it was considered a spiritual gift. Because in the Bible, one of the gifts is that ability. 
okay? Everyone comes in with a gift, sometimes more than one. Um, so from that moment, I finally understood what it meant that when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. How did this guy know who I was? And by the way, after we finished those classes, two weeks later, I couldn't find him. Like he would meet me at my locker and we would talk all the time about this. And guess what? I never saw him again at school. I've asked other people, hey, do you remember Kevin Ogden? Nobody remembered who he was. Nobody remembered having him in class but he was in class with me and a lot of my friends and he simply vanished. Now it could be that his parents moved and whatever, and, but, but I, don't, I don't think so. And then a lot of other very weird things continued to happen. And that is, that is what started my path into, I had to know what was what else was out there? I, I just knew that being told this is what you have to believe in Bible study and everything else is evil, that just didn't resonate for me. And so I always sought out everything that was not normal. So hence paranormal. So from, from that moment on, I reignited and embraced my spiritual gift and I used it to help people. If I thought that I saw something I could stop, I would do it. So my whole life has been like that. And then you, you go through everything and here we are today and I'm still doing it. So I know that one of my personal soul contracts was to do this and to help people. And eventually when I had my near death experience and came back with the ability to speak with those who have crossed over, I then also knew not only did I have to share it, that the experience that, that, that heaven was real and God was real and this is what I was shown, but it, it just, everything leads me back to this path. So I 1 million percent know that this is one of my, my soul contracts. Um, a lot of people also, and I'll give you the flip side, and then I want to hear, and I want to read chat, and I want to hear Lori's experiences and in, in Albert's too. Um, on the negative side, because I can't like go over like my whole life, good, bad, and we be here like for a week or longer. But on the negative side, I always had this fear of abandonment, okay? Like I always felt like if anything happened, like I was, I didn't want to lose my parents. I was so afraid. I always thought about their from a very, very early age. And as I got to be junior high in high school, I became, I, I started to have very bad anxiety attacks because I, I had this irrational fear of losing my parents. And I didn't know how I was gonna live. And so my parents took me to talk to a psychologist to try to process like why I had this irrational fear. Well, in hindsight, I, I believe that probably it was that I had lost my parents before and it had been traumatic and therefore I was having this irrational fear in this lifetime. Um, I also then always had a need to be close to people and love people. And I always had the ability, even the most difficult people, and y'all have seen me go through some of the most difficult people constantly. Mm -hmm. um, I always had more patience than the average person uh, for people. And if people were different or they were complicated or I, I thought I could help them or change them or help them to know that there was more to them than just 
the sum of what they thought they were. So on a negative point, I had to stop doing that. And I've been doing pretty good with that. Um, but that is something that I believe um, that, it, you know, it's kind of like the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Because some people have to do things over and over and over uh -huh. um, before they get the message or they get the lesson. Right. Okay. So those are a couple examples of famous people and then regular examples of myself um, and a positive thing and a negative thing that I believe I completely signed up for before I ever got here. So what are you guys like, Lori? Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on soul contracts and the, the things that you've seen about it and how it might apply to you? And, and then we'll move on and we'll do people in chat and everything. Well, first of all, I just want to say that I am not an expert in any of this, but I have for years and years and years always thought there was there was a different story to my life that there was something different that that I wanted to find out because you know there was just too many things that happened there was too much negativity in my life from a, a young child all the way up to you know in my 50s that I knew that there was there had to be there had to be a reason for all of us and you know and I was telling Kat when I was when I was young, my father raised raised four children because my mother left him, and we were all very young. And to get us out of the way, he sent us to a, an Assembly of God Pentecostal church every Sunday and Wednesday night. And I would I would listen to people speaking in tongues, and it was kind of freaky to me. And then. One night they showed us this movie uh, on the rapture and and to me it became funny because I knew at the age of, of 12 years old that this was not this was not the right way for me to be thinking. So I think all my life I've always tried to look like outside the box to to know that there was, there, there was something bigger and something something that people just weren't really looking at and I wanted to find what that was and um, and I started doing some research and and I've come up with something that works for me it may not work for everybody but it works for me and 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 I have answers to why I've gone through the things that I've gone through in my life so you know, it's not for everybody, but it is for me. And um, so you, you also felt like just that that thing, like we were talking about today. You know, and I've I talked about this kind of recently about like don't like don't just go with what I'm telling you today because I. I'm saying it, do some research about it. Don't, don't be a follower, lead, be the leader in your life. And, and don't be afraid to explore things that are outside of that box. Because if we don't explore other things, then humanity will never start to reach a higher vibration and it is only through reaching a higher vibrational level that we can ascend to other things here there was a time like i said planes different things right now there are physicists that have discovered i want to say like 15 maybe even up to 18 other dimensions so you have the 1D, the 2D, and the 3D. Just because 
they've not been able to explain why they know about other fourth dimension, fifth dimension, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, and so right. on, doesn't mean that it isn't there. Which also will, <coughs> think about if everybody just stayed in the box, okay? We're just gonna believe everything we were told because our parents taught us and their parents taught them and so on and so on and so on. How will we ever get any further in humanity if we don't think outside of the box? Right. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, you know, definitely Lori and Albert and many, many other of my friends. See, Jen TT remembers what is the feather stiff as a board. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, um, if if it doesn't feel like everything you were taught that you're just supposed to believe it because the person or the people you grew up with told you it was the case, well, then get out there and explore because through that exploration you will find so many other things that will make your life make sense and who doesn't want that who doesn't want to break like people when you make the same mistake over and over and over um which i tend to do with men Hey, y'all see me go through a few of them. Hey, okay? and I seem to always hit the, the, the ones that are broken and that need fixing. And I'm like convinced I can do that because I'm patient and loving and patient and extra patient. But that hasn't really worked out so good for me personally. So one of my struggles has been to learn and Lori knows this, to live alone and depend only on myself, period. And I'm talking emotionally, not financially, emotionally. And Lori is one of the people, and I'm not gonna explain how, but she, had it not been for her, for Lori, the person you see on panel, I probably never would have been able to get to where I am today. She knows why and how. And I knew at that moment there, there now I also there there are some things that, that I have seen about my past lives that I've done with Lori, and there was a reason for us to have met and for everything to happen the way it did. So one of the things, the contracts that I have been able to effectively break and am very much enjoying is the fact that I very much love being alone. Not always, but the majority of the time, very much. I don't like having to answer to anyone I don't like having to, except for like my kids in their needs. But I really just don't feel the need to do that whole that whole thing anymore. I mean, do I want to be alone forever? No, but I don't really know when or if I'm going to want it any different because I really enjoy the things that I enjoy oil painting, the makeup, the reborn dolls, photography, all of the things I enjoy doing versus sacrificing for guys that I'm dating and then doing the things they like. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm my own boss and I will never ever be with somebody again who is abusive to me because I, I did that. Uh, Clearly, I had to learn something from it. I did, and I'll never do it again. Not interested. But sometimes that's a hard one to break for a lot of women and, and men, you know? Um, and, and, also, and also, Kat, I think people need to know when to break from the negativity. 
you know they you need you need to to realize that if something is neg is negatively impacting you, the best thing to do is to get out of it. You know, the higher the higher your frequency goes in positivity, the be that's the best the best place for you to be. Better things happen to you when you're in a higher positive. vibration. Oh, mm -hmm. that that's so well put because part of the thing with dimensions, okay, and this one's going to like, your brain is going to like catch on fire and you're going to be like, cat, stop. Okay. Mm -hmm. The different dimensions, okay, and this is something I was shown when I had my near-death experience and I've always explained things to people about suicide. That, uh, that people, and there's a video, if you go in my videos and hit search and type in suicide, if you've ever struggled with that or what have you, or you know somebody who did commit suicide, watch that video. And it might make you feel a little better about that person who might have taken their life. My best friend took her life. My best, best friend since sixth grade took her life when she was 38. And I was shown my niece, you two. My niece, my niece took her life three years ago. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That in that, uh, it's it's an awful thing. But when I say that you do not go to the fiery burning hell, at, at a point where somebody reaches so low that they want to take their life, they are not in their right mind. They're taking a permanent to a temporary problem, but you can't see that when you're in the middle of it. Yeah, um, but they do, they choose to end their their life yes. contract, their spiritual contract too and 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 there's complete forgiveness on that. Yes. There's no you know there's no condemnation or anything for that just because you nope. choose to, to end your contract. Nope. There isn't. And that is what Hey, Steve-O, I see you popped in, popped out. Hey, Shazzy, Susan. Oh, Susan, you changed the spelling of your name. Um, that, that in Chevy, and let me see if anybody else popped in. Um, in you know, with the suicide, okay, this is what I was shown in my near-death experience, all right? I was shown, and, and I'll give you the exact analogy, that... If, if heaven is up here, okay, and hell is the bottom floor, well, hell isn't really the bottom floor, okay? So you have the lower level, which is called soul recovery. So people that commit suicide actually are given the most love and understanding and they are given their own guardian angels to help them to heal their soul it's kind of like an emergency room in intensive care so i was shown like you have this super tall building all right and it reaches the sky you can you can see the tip of it through the clouds and as depending on the, the things that you did that may have been bad you might go to the 18th floor because you still need to learn some things about life so you continue to learn and graduate to the next level next level next level and then you get to let's say 20. we're just hypothetical here and Floor 20 is when you get to the very top and then you decide to come back and be reincarnated to do life again. Hopefully, having learned your lessons about why you made these mistakes or why you did this bad thing. Like there are some people who rob people their whole life. They beat people up. They, they live, let's say... A mobster, okay, for example, they may need to go to floor six 
because they've not learned a lesson. So they go and then they, it's kind of like you have a guardian angel instructors that talk to you about, okay, these mistakes. And then when you come to the point, you get to the top and you're going to be reincarnated, you go over your contract. What do I want to experience in this life? What do I need to experience? What lessons have I not learned? And then you enter into a contract. No matter how awful it is you've been through in life, if you understand that you've picked this before you ever came here, that you won't feel like such a victim of life. And so the key to these, these repeating, let's say the negative aspects of a soul contract and how you go on not repeating the same thing over and over and over is acceptance, forgiveness, and the realization that this isn't working for me and I need to let it go. But more importantly, you have to release all of the people that you've co-created the negative with. You need to release them from their contract to you. Okay? Which I know is a little out there, but I promise you, if you start to do your own research on this, it will really make sense to you. Okay? So we are not a victim of anything as much as we might not like to believe that we chose to come here and have these experiences there was a reason why so let's say this time around my lesson was maybe in a past life i burned witches at the stake in salem or something and in this life and I was highly religious and very judgmental and, and you know, this, that, and the other. So that in, in, in this lifetime, here I am doing what I do. And I'm doing things differently. I'm trying to teach people that just because you have these gifts or you believe in spiritual things in the paranormal, it doesn't make you evil. It doesn't make you a bad person. I don't know what that vibration is. Hold on. Um, Lori, mute for a second. Okay, it's Lori. Lori, come back on. You can, okay. There, there's some kind of vibration coming through. It could be, try pulling your headphone jack back in and out. Um, okay, now it's gone. I don't, no, no, there it is. Do you have another set of headphones by chance? No. Um, um, tell, me, tell me, wait, tell me if it, if it goes off now. Okay. All right, say something. Okay. It's gone. You, need, you know what it is? It's the, the fan that my computer oh, sits on. It's interfering, the radio frequency. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. All right. It's off. Okay. All right. That was it. Good. You just figured that out. Super I don't know. Fun. It's vibrating. It's, it's yeah. vibrating again. Okay. That that totally makes sense. Okay. Um. So. Okay, y'all know if I lose track, then I don't remember. Um, okay, it, it clearly, my path is, I feel like my contract this go around is maybe I strive so hard to teach everybody to accept their spiritual gifts and to help people with understanding that when you die, it isn't just lights out in your warm dark. Your soul is made up of energy. I believe scientists 
figured out that when they weighed a person prior to death and after death, I believe they registered that the soul weighed like six grams. I know, Pearl, if you can Google that, I want to say, I don't think it was ounces. I think it was grams. But anyway, they were able, there was weight to the soul once it left the body. And if you are scientific and you believe, well, no, it's a scientific fact that energy can neither be created or destroyed. So when we pass away, our soul is energy. This strictly is a human vessel. Okay. And one of the reasons that people, it, it's kind of like until you learn the things you need to learn, you will continue to be drawn to earth, to the earth plane, okay, into this particular dimension. And if you do not learn the things you're supposed to learn, um, in, in Earth, as kind of as a whole, is considered a lower vibrational dimension, okay? There are other places that are higher vibrational or where the beings don't have the human vehicle as a body. They may have a different vehicle, but their soul is still there. Now, if you believe or you've listened to anything from the Buddhist religion, okay? Buddha told man he shouldn't, when he said that you shouldn't like give in to your desires because if you, if you have desire, it can keep you from reaching your highest vibrational self to, to really understand the things that you can do within yourself if you vibrate at a higher frequency. So he wasn't talking about like sex. He wasn't talking about that kind of desire. It was that earth in and of itself is something that when we pass away, our soul is compelled. Like you're drawn like a moth to a flame. If you have not learned the things that you need to learn, you will be drawn to come back and do things here. Now, the dimensions. I was giving an example of suicide and that you get the most compassion. Your soul is in recovery. You're in soul recovery down the ear. And then you, you lovingly learn how that choice affected everyone that it did. And you have to feel the pain of that. And some people would call that hell, you know, to have to feel the pain of your loved ones. And for all the generations that your suicide might have affected people. My best friend that shot herself, her son turned 19 this last year and he committed suicide within this last year. So you are shown how your choices affect everybody for generation after generation because they think, well, my mom did it, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the easy way out. And then you come back and you, yeah, you hope that you don't make that error again. Some people do. Um, but you keep coming back to learn what you're supposed to learn so that you can go on to be in a, a lighter vibrational state in a different harmony with life. And so these other dimensions are levels of the of this high rise. Okay. And I was shown you have all these levels and the different, each level is a different dimension. And within that dimension, you learn other things. But until you can raise your vibration to get there, 
you cannot see, let's say, the fifth dimension if you're still vibrating at a third dimension level where you're all caught up in the 3D, if you're all caught up in the, the money and the materialism and things like that. There's so much more to life than the things that we have. There's so much more to life than having to have a guy in your life all the time. There's so much more within yourself that you'll never know until you learn that you have this power within you to make all of those things right. Um, now, Callie, I'm, I'm reading true. something. I'm reading something Callie said that when you sit and look at what is before you, you will find that you alone have the ability to sever the connection and cord that negate the binding contracts with those that have come into our life. Bingo. Callie just nailed it. And, and I had a feeling she was. Okay. If you don't learn to cut the cord, then you're going to keep, you're going to keep attached to this. This is going to be attached to this. And in, in this is negative for this until you learn to cut the cord, then you're, you're going to keep repeating the same thing and it's going to have a similar outcome. So if you don't learn that, okay. So how do we get out of the negative contract? forgiveness and the revelation that we control the negative things through these spiritual contracts. And sometimes like what Steve Yoakum said, that we're a victim of others and situations. Yes. And we choose them. We choose these, these situations. Oh, Pearl 21 grams on the salt. That's a lot if you think about it. Okay, just mm -hmm. that alone should tell somebody that the soul is who you are. <coughs> and Buddha explained that there's something that's called the seed of life, and it is within every individual person. And within the seed of life is the memory of all of your lifetimes and all of everything. It is the same seed that is tuned into the Akashic record or the book of life that has all of the answers to everything and everything about the past and everything about the different dimensions and frequencies and all of these things that we don't know because we're stuck inside this crystal ball and we can't get out because we're trapped by what we've been taught and we don't want to get out and look outside of the ball, okay? So it is within that seed, okay? No matter which way you look, you're gonna have cellular memory that is purely, they, you know, they've discovered that our cells have memory that, um, all of these things, our soul has memory, our, everything has memory. And it, it's all because of this seed of life that is tied into everything. So if you don't learn to look outside this, that you're trapped inside, you can never see the fourth dimension, the fifth dimension, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and so on. Because in order to see this next level, you have to be open to it. If you're not open, then you can't resonate to this high of a frequency to be able to see it. So if all you can do is look at the three dimensional, then you're never going to see any other dimension because you're not open to it. And you can only become open to it if you learn to sever the things that hold you in the lower vibration. So a good example for me would be to stop reacting to other people's things that they say about me, like somebody that might be with my ex-fiance, okay? 
if I don't stop reacting to her and she doesn't, okay, she can keep trying to trigger me, but I get to choose how I react, which then perpetuates the thing after thing after thing after thing, and it never ends. So who's responsible for cutting that cord, stop reacting, and therefore releasing her yep. from whatever karmic stuff that she's got going on with me? I can't really do her, but I can do me. So yeah, you're in control of of your own words, your own thoughts, and your own actions. Correct. <clears throat> For all the miserable things that have happened in my, my life, I chose them. Even against my better judgment. I didn't listen to myself. I didn't listen to my higher self. I, right. I don't know if y'all have ever done that, but I definitely have. So in looking at chat, let's see, uh, Pearl said she never looks at herself as a victim. Hey, Jenny, <laughs> um, especially after my accident and never wanted it to define me. So Jake had some sort of accident that he then, he, he never wanted to, I guess, be viewed as a victim. Um, I think that that's an important cord to cut for a lot of people. Um, and if you see yourself, Callie said, as a victim, that mindset will attach itself to you and you will always feel victimized. So you see yourself as the victor and the one who's overcome rather than succumbed. Bingo, bingo, bingo. That's exactly right as well. So you have to like, you have to break your own story, if you will, to, to do that. Um, let's see, what else are people saying in chat? Lessons are not always fun. In fact, it's the hard ones that are <coughs> Not not a lot of fun. Because if you think about it, like the happy things that happen in your life, you look forward to them. Like, I've done three shows in one week. Well, what has changed for me? Well, one thing that has changed for me, changed for me is Bible oil. Okay. Somehow on a structural cellular level, it it opened my ability to see the seed of life within me to know that I am connected to God and that he is the person that is in charge. I'm not in charge. And whomever you look at as your creator, it could be Buddha, it could be Allah, it could be, there, there are so many different religions and so many different doctrines. It, it is, but if you don't connect to source, to the pure source, and realize that there isn't anything flawed about you. And that is one of the hardest things to do is accept yourself for who you are. This is how God made you. And you loving yourself is a key to not allowing others to victimize you or hurt you or destroy you or what have you. And in doing that, you can't just say it and be like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll do that. It, you have to do it, mean it, and you have to forgive, and you have to grow. And only then, then and only then, can you move to the next frequency. Um, Pearl, um, you are one of the people that I believe came in my life to teach me that I should wait 24 hours before I do a rant video, okay? She was <laughs> like, if you still want to do it, and she did it in 24 hours, then do it and I'll support you. But guess what? How many, y'all haven't seen me do very many rants in a very long time. I mean, the, the, the purple hair girl, she tends to trigger me, but my goal is to sever that particular tie. If I stop reacting and stop whatever, but, but then she attacks my friends and that's what gets me. Then I go and I defend, I want to defend my friends. I don't really care about myself, but I care about my friends. So 
Pearl taught me to not be so reactive and give myself some time to calm down and think. And if it was still that important to me, she would be there and she would support me and not judge me. And she has made me a better person. Okay. So that would be an example as opposed to um, some friends that I had in the past that you guys all know about. One in particular that I really thought I could fix her. And truth of the matter was, is she really was not a good person, nor did she want to be. And she re, I allowed her to victimize me, re victimize me, re. And one of the things that they say is okay, you have this person that you're trying to pull away from, and they keep grabbing and grabbing and grabbing you, and they won't let you go. And they guilt you into staying, so then you stay. And one example of how that's a contract is in another lifetime, you might have been married to that person, let's say, and you mm -hmm. vow you never, ever, ever leave them. Well, when you make a vow, that's a form of a contract. And the Akashic records, Akashic records, they everything is known. So you can't hide from it. You said it, but the only thing you can do is say, look, I was insane at the moment. I made that choice and I forgive myself for doing that. And I'm cutting the cord anyway, even though it may hurt. It's what's best for you. And it's the only way you can move up and forward and break that contract release that person from the contract and be very careful what you say out loud. Because when you <clears> say, I'll meet you for dinner, but you never meet your friend for dinner. You just keep having all these reasons why you don't go. Well, you're creating a vow that you're gonna go to dinner when really you're like, I'm over this particular person and I don't wanna go. So why do I keep saying I'm going to go and making a vow that I'm going to. The next time that person's calls, you should say, you know what? I'm good. But if, if something changes, I'll get in touch and you hang up. Now that could apply to a, a, a ex-boyfriend or a girlfriend or whatever. You can look at that in the same way. You have to find a way to break those those contracts, the negative ones, okay? Hey, so, Kat. yeah. But um, but I also I also believe on that note that um, we choose the people that we want to have an annoy us, and we choose the ones we want to annoy, and that that's <laughs> that's giving that's giving the experience of of rising above some of those relationships that that aren't good for us so i think that that can be part of your your contract that you you get you have with others you know from the very beginning and that's just what i believe i completely agree and you also put that in a way that like people who communicate with ascended masters and people that as psychics or spiritual workers or energy workers, when we go into and tap into that source higher energy, that is exactly some of the lessons, exactly the way that you put it. Mm -hmm. Like almost verbatim, which is really interesting you said that, the way you said that because that is very true or it's my belief anyway mm -hmm. I'm like you do and i've had some pretty hard lessons um mm -hmm. and like callie said each person leaves an imprint on your life and soul and that you are in need of at the time they are in your life that imprint serves to allow you to move on down the path your soul is taking Right, right. Um, which is very true. Um, and Jenny said, let's see, 
Jenny, we always come back and everyone in our lives comes back into our lives until we figure it out and we get it right, which is hence the feeling of deja vu. I also agree with that. Um, you tend to come and do life with the same people that you have done it with before. That's why you've got soulmates, as in romantic. You have twin flames, which can be romantic or friendship. It may be that I used to be married to you in a past life, or you were my sister in a past life. Right. So for us, we are here working different things out. Or in our case, it's always been a positive friendship and relationship. Right. And it's a mutual um, understanding of one another. And we talk about deep things. And it it, it just, it, it was like I'd always known you. Like, yeah. when we met, it was like, hey, come sit yeah. on the bed. Like, it, it was. I think I was in your bed 15 minutes after I met you, right? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Everybody gets to come and get in bed. <laughs> you know? you're like, if you make it to Cat's bed, you're you're, <laughs> I, <laughs> you're awesome. <laughs> that, that, that's that's right, and <laughs> and it it's so true though. And so, you know, you have people in your life that make you feel good and make you look forward to talking to them. You look forward to this and that. And then there are other people. You're like. My God, this person sucks the freaking life out of me. Yeah. <laughs> Pay attention to those people. I'm not suggesting you give up on hard people because I tend to have more patience than most people for hard people. But there comes a point where, let's say, you do an inventory every three years. It's what I've always been taught and suggested. And if at the end of that three years, if you go back and there's more check marks in the bad than there's good, it's time to respectfully walk away. Maybe you'll come back to one another later in life, but if you do an inventory every few years and you really evaluate those things, you can cause, you can, you can, take a lot of grief out of your life. So, and, and yeah, the things like Jenny said, you know, I've met you somewhere, or you're very familiar. Um, and Callie, snapshot of our soul forms a picture of what life was, is, and will be, but you have to be able to let go of the snapshot that do not fit in the picture in order to see your truth for this life. Absolutely. So if you can learn to break these negative contracts that you yourself agreed to before you you came here, well, who's the only person who can change that? You. Yeah. How can you change that? Insanity when I made the vow. <laughs> and detachment. And then before you know it, you're surrounded with people that make you feel good and they don't bring you down and they don't suck the life out of you. But you should always try to be kind. Hey, Nancy. I think Pirate might have popped in. Pirate, Rainbow. Rainbow was here earlier. Somebody must have gone live because, like, my viewership, either I'm really boring. Or someone else went live and half my people left. <laughs> so, uh, but you know what? If it's just us eight people, then I'm good with that. Because I know people will watch the video even after I go off. You know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, Albert, what what do you think about all of, all of this that I've gone over? What do you think and how maybe have things... Um, happened in your life that you think might be some kind of a contract or something you signed on for? Well, 2015 was the light switch for me. Everything popped on. And then 
throughout the years up to now, it's like everything's falling in place, like new things are is being taught again. It's like I've been been someone, or how am I putting it? It's like I'm relearning from from the past. Right. Did you feel like you almost woke up from a really long sleep and all of a sudden you were awake again? Yeah. Um, were, you know, I, I often think that, that people, um, were you brought up uh, religiously, Albert? No. No. Uh -uh. Um, do you... Do you feel like, or have you ever had anyone tell you what they think the reason that you avoided your spiritual gifts for so long was? I think it was when I was younger, things happened. And when I complained about it, it's like, like a uh, hush up boy or whoop your ass or some shit like that. Or you know your what? imagination. Yeah. That actually is is another thing. Like people that grow up in families where they don't get, like, you know, like like you're not supposed to feel emotions, and for God's sakes, don't share them. And if, like you said, if you do, I'm gonna whoop your ass or whatever. Um, you know, those serve a purpose. You just don't know exactly what that is at the time that you go through it. Right. And you can choose to be different than how you were brought up and you can feel safe and experience life at a different level once you let go of it. Lori, I, I think Lori, I, Lori will be back, I think. <laughs> she muted and her camera's off. Come back soon. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, it, it, it takes a lot of deep thinking to kind of look at this and, and, and keep an open mind, especially if you're not already in the paranormal, as opposed to, like, pretty much most of everyone who's still listening is... Yeah is in the paranormal or has an interest in it or they wouldn't still be you know listening or maybe somebody didn't see the show but they'll watch it over the next month and 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 don't you also think that the different people were brought into your life for a reason yes i believe that yeah, yeah and you know, I also think that there are people <clears throat> like uh, Mac, who on YouTube is I'm okay, but you're not. You know, she has this giant connection to animals and to rescuing them and loving them and and all of this. Um, and I've known I, I'm also an animal rescue person, um, and I'm an animal person. You know, we have two dogs, a snake, two bearded dragons. And if I had a bigger house, I would probably still be doing parrot rescue. Okay, like animal, I like, Buki, are you okay? Buki? Oh, did y'all hear Buki cry? It's okay. Good Lord, what is that? Cat, hang on one second. I just set my alarm off. Uh oh. No wonder that's why Buki. <laughs> She's like, what is that? I'm in your lap, Mama. Oh goodness gracious. So, you know, soul contracts to me have always made like absolute sense or a version of it whether it was named soul contract at the time or not um i always felt like 
okay, lots of times when bad things happen, I'm like, what did I do in a past life? If there is chronic debt, there is still a very high pitched noise. No, it's not. Okay, Albert, not. mute for a second. Mute for a second. Okay, Lori, mute for a second. It's it's you, Lori. It's like now that's weird. It's a really high pitched, high pitched noise. It's almost like fingernails on a chalkboard or very loud cricket. Well, you know what? It's crickets. Oh, okay. It's crickets. <laughs> At least I got the animal right. <laughs> it's cricket. Those crickets. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm I'm going to mute it, though, for a minute. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. All right. I'm like, man, that sounds like really loud crickets. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, I've always felt like when bad things are happening, number one, I'm like, well, you made this choice. Like, I've always been like, there were warning signs. There were warning signs everywhere, and you just ignored them. And... You know, like hindsight's twenty twenty kind of thing. Yeah. Like, there are certain people that you guys know I had in my life that all of you guys saw it. Y'all saw it right here in the middle of this crystal ball. But y'all cared so much about me, you weren't going to be like, cat, bad mistake, don't do <laughs> it. And y'all, you know, don't say i don't really think you should do that although i did have quite a few people actually say that so I, i'm gonna throw this in here even though i said i wasn't gonna be reactive i i do i do need to really point out look ghost queen i actually addressed you by name you need to get it out of your little pea picking brain that I in no way find your boyfriend attractive. I would not be with him if somebody paid me $1 million. I don't want him. That's why I broke up with him. I'm not into surrounding my child or my children with somebody that has his background. I also don't enjoy cheaters. I don't enjoy liars. And I don't enjoy people who do not love their children. So I need you to really just stop. I, I, I guess it's good that you view him as the greatest gift, you know, to women. But I, I, I really, I don't know why you are so focused on that I'm interested in him. Because in no way, shape, or form would I want to be doing anything in life with that man. Again, that's why I broke up with him. The person that I got to know is not the person that was presented in the beginning. And I know for a fact, okay, that you are experiencing many, many of the things that I did. I'm not going to tell you how I know, but I know. So stop. I didn't want him then, and I sure as hell don't want him now. You keep him and enjoy him, because I don't want him. I've broken the contract. <laughs> I have broken that <laughs> contract, and I do not want it back. <laughs> that, that, that soul contract, whatever it was, I felt I had to do with him because of some past life thing. I have broken that contract 
And th there's just, there's zero, nada, nothing. Okay, so. Maybe, maybe it was something that he was in your past life, but wasn't sure what uh, he was. Yeah, right. Now, in, in that being said, that's the thing. No matter who you end up with, it is because of something. Look, sometimes people come into your life for a reason, and some people come into it for a season, like a year or, or an entire season, like yeah. an actual season, or maybe it's for a few years. And <clears throat> here's the thing about karmic or soul contract relationships. The only way, okay, everything's always good in the beginning, right? Like you fall in love and you, um, you, you everything is great in the beginning. And then that makes you blinded to what you, everyone else sees is right in front of your face or their face. And they're like, okay, why is she doing this? Well, you're blind. And that's the only way that two people will work out their karmic debt to each other or to learn whatever they were meant to learn from that person. If you didn't have that good honeymoon stage, you would never get to the lesson. So I do believe that people come into your life and you're meant to work through the things you are so that you can break that that contract because maybe that soul contract has never been good has never been positive has never been something that advanced you so you have to experience this really bad thing from them so that you are done with it and only when you're done with it can you break that soul contract with that person so there are many things in our life that require us to break it once we feel we have learned enough and been hurt enough or whatever whomever it may be in your life sometimes it's a parent you know that people will cut ties with because it's so yeah. toxic or negative that in unless you break that that you cut that cord in this life during this life and you forgive them not fake forgive them but forgive them but also know that moving on is what you have to do or you're not going to survive it and then you're going to have to do what come back and do it all over again right Lori yeah, yeah, and I was just gonna say that, and maybe it's it's meant to to give you a, a a valuable experience on learning trusting what what things to trust in people and what things not to trust. What you red flags you should see in the next person, so that you keep yourself from. Can I listen to my intuition with that person? Before I met Michael, I would have never ended up with Michael. And as y'all know, Michael, it's believed that he killed people and he nearly killed, he put one woman in a coma. Okay. That was the stupidest thing I ever did. Mm. Well, it was definitely one of the more dangerous ones. Um, but I thoroughly have learned now between that and some other things in my life, I don't even know if I could ever have enough trust level to ever like be in another like relationship. I'm enjoying my daughter in my painting and all of the other things I enjoy. And I surround myself with the people that are good for me and that I feel I'm good for them. Yeah, but you know, you can also look at that as, as you were looking to please everybody else and now you finally 
discover that it's time to please yourself. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's been yeah. a hard one in my lifetime. Yeah. Mm -mm. I have always been all about people. Pleasing. People yes. pleasing. I love people. And it isn't that I've stopped loving people. It's that if I don't love myself first, then how am I going to be any good for my children? How yeah. is that that person who was in my life that y'all all know, I'm not going to mention any names, but it, it was a female. Every negative thing that happened in my life and the people that she hurt in my life, like people that are in this chat right now. <coughs> so, had I not gone through that and finally been like, stop. It, you just, but I will never make that mistake again, ever. Because there are red flags that would come through so hard and so strong. It's like, I can see it a mile away now. And that's not ever been the case. I always believe in the best in people. Right. And you know this. How many times have we talked about this one? <laughs> how yeah. many times I forgive people before I'm like, okay, are you waiting to get kicked in the teeth again? Because it's going to happen. Yeah. And it did over and over and over with person after person after person. And there are other people that you don't see around anymore because that was not a positive relationship. They were negative and glass half empty. And I just can't do that. I can't do that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I have this saying on my computer at work. It says a bad day for uh, a bad day for the ego is a great day for my soul. <laughs> well, somebody wrote that that understood that. Yeah. <laughs> they say that your spirit guides are like, Look at the expansion she's making. <laughs> right. You know, spirit guides or guardian angels, some believe they're two different entities and some believe they're the same. Yeah. They're not I think they're the same. Yeah, I, I do too. Yeah. They're yeah. not permitted to influence your free will. And they're not permitted to change things because in doing so, it would interrupt the space-time continuum, okay? Yeah. It, would, it would change other things for other people's future. So they can't do that. Yeah, but do you think that they, that they try to guide us through positive thoughts? I think they try. I think that sometimes we're too stubborn to listen. So I think free will. Be the guardian angel in... What, Albert? And who, what was it? Uh, shit, what would you just say? Guardian angel or? And spirit guy. Yeah. Okay. Like some, and, and look, I believe we, we can have more than one spirit guide. And the reason being is I believe that you, you have your angel or your spirit guide. And that is assigned to you. Or I bet you have a contract with that person. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That, that entity, that spirit. And I believe sometimes when we lose, like, let's say, a parent or somebody yeah. very special to us, they also can become your guardian angel or spirit. That they, they can guide you spiritually. Not that they're a spirit guide, but they can guide you spiritually. And there's a difference. Well, but when, if he was, well, like me, I was born dead because I had the core wrapped around my neck and they had. Really? Yeah. Wow. And when I came back, someone came back with me. Oh, really? Huh. Well, wow. and he's who, still with me. Okay, 
how did you figure out that something came back with you? Which, by the way, commonly does happen because you can't see heaven or that place and not have something come back with you to be sure that things are handled in a certain way. So do you consider that one of your guides? Yeah. I think he's he's here to help me in everything and I guess he made himself the guide. Does because you every it's like every picture I took uh here recently, he's in there with me. He's always uh behind me. You could see him. He has like bib overhauls on and right and a mustache. And he has one of them uh, old flap caps like Fritz Emperor's used to wear. Right. Right. Like he was like, looked like a handyman. That's, That's cool. so interesting. <laughs> that, and I totally, I totally believe that. Um, I. Hey, send him, my, send him my way. I need to fix my fence. Right. Right. <laughs> Thank you. How is everything going your way as far as um, the hurricane, tropical storm? Are you guys getting any of that or expected to? Over here? Yeah. No, we, we it started over here and uh, we got the last of the rain yesterday. It pushed through Louisiana this morning, I think. So it, it's all gone from us. I guess it's just lingering over there. Like, yeah. like I, 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 they downgraded it to a tropical storm, but it's apparently dumping a lot of rain. Yeah, they're going to get flooded. <clears throat> um, How's, oh, Pearl's in North Carolina, isn't she? Uh, yeah, she she left uh, to go to higher ground. No yeah. pun intended. Hey, that's smart. Absolutely. I remember when you guys were getting that that big hurricane, you couldn't even get out of town at the end. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? In the next time the next time it happens, I will I won't stick around number two. That was scary. It me out so bad. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, that was scary. I I remember being so nervous about that yeah. for you. Um, yeah, but and, and all the all the possums never came back. That. You know, huh? again, like you learned something from that, from staying. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, so again, if the one thing that I could give y'all to take away from this show is everything happens for a reason. We make choices to live certain things here some of them are negative and need to be broken or we will be a detriment to ourselves and others and then other things are beautiful and the goal is to have more of those things than the other so can you break a soul contract that's negative yes mm -hmm. You have to, okay, here's the key. You have to admit that you were wrong in making that vow or contract in the first place. Number two, you have to forgive yourself and the other person involved in that contract. And three, you need to accept yourself for who you are because that is how your creator made you. God source, Buddha, whatever it is that you believe is that higher being, except that he doesn't make mistakes and that it's only truly accepting yourself for who you are that you free yourself from all contracts that are negative. So, so what that about if you if you don't break them and you die and you come back in the 
And then you have to keep from your past come looking for you. Well, they often do. And then you end up having, if that was a, like, let's say in another life, you're like, you got married and you swore to that person, I'll never leave you, I'll never abandon you, I'll never whatever. But that's not really a logical contract to make necessarily. Because yeah. forever can be a really long time past this right. life. So in doing that, then the next life, that person finds you and they might be your stalker. And you don't understand why they won't leave you alone. Well, in another life, you made a vow to never leave them. And maybe you did leave them. So you're fulfilling this negative contract, karmic debt in things that, that are not good for you. So I think mm -hmm. it's all about learning. And for me, it's always been about thinking outside of the box. Because inside the box, inside this ball, how do you get anywhere else? You don't. It's just some people aren't ready to get out of the box. I think when you touch somebody's life, each connection you make with somebody, if they die, they come and visit you. Just to I, see how you do. You know what? I do as well. But I also believe that a lot of the times what we're communicating with yeah. are in one of those other dimensions. So we're here and on this side is a parallel dimension where this person here hasn't learned all the lessons, but this one's over on the 10th dimension going, yo, dummy, figure <laughs> it out. So you can come over here in the 10th dimension where you know of all of the places in the world and you vibrate at such a high frequency that you really get it. And even in that is the only time I think you're ever free. Because I don't think of Earth as being a very high vibrational place. Right. Like I've often thought of Earth as like, is this actually hell? Like, like I've often wondered. I. Yeah. And in a sense, it might be, but it's not like the fiery burning hell you learn about in church. So. Yeah. You know, um. Again. Well, you know, at least in, in, in what I've what I understand about it is the low frequencies, like the depression and that kind of stuff, is what resembles hell. Right. And how so, many people do you see going through? That? Yeah. Yeah. So many people live that, and it's so hard, and it breaks my heart when I see someone experiencing that that they can't escape so right. yeah it see in my belief my in my personal belief is i don't believe that there's a hell i believe that we all murderers everybody goes to the same place because you know in heaven there's no there's no bad there's no evil there's you know it's all there's only love and what loving god is going to send his children to hell to fire and brimstone right and and even in in that maybe okay like lots sometimes uh you hear about people who have had ascended masters work through mediums or psychics and they will find out that, okay, a, a murder victim, maybe the previous life was actually the murderer, okay? Yeah. And yeah. so it's the reverse role, and they, they come back to experience what it's like to be on the receiving end of what they did in a previous life. So both people were a party to the contract. Um, some people come here with disabilities that hey jen thanks for coming good night, night I'm, getting, I'm getting ready to pop off here too so amberlyn can go to sleep but um, she, she's walked in like twice going um like, uh, thumbs up <laughs> right right 
<laughs> um, so, you know, I, I think, you know, and I know some people are going to be like, I can't believe you said that. Okay. But what I'm saying is I do think that there are things that we, we've done in a past life that then we have to, like, maybe you were very wealthy, materialistic. And the only thing that mattered to you were, was money. And, and in wanting all of that, you hurt people. Well, then when you pass away and you 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 come back, you are like, well, I want to live a life of poverty and in etc. Now you might think, no matter how screwed up it is, that you would think, why did I make this contract? Well, you made it in in the book of life, the Akashic record, it was noted. It was noted right here, written down. You signed this contract. See your signature? And then, so really, you're in charge of much of a lot that happens to you. Mm -hmm. And so you are the only one who can break the patterns. So right. hopefully, what's right. around you is more worth or what is more shit what am i the, the thing, <laughs> what is, what's around things around you is worth more than money right right oh yeah yes okay i will pearl um <laughs> so yeah i you know um so food for thought i i hope that a lot of this maybe cause someone to go, ooh, I'm going to look into this a little bit more. Because the whole purpose of it is being able to help you to break free of those things that are negatively affecting you. Okay? Um, and one of the ways you can do that are many of the things that I learned from other light workers that did past life readings for me so that I was aware of the things and the reasons for certain things in this life. So even if it caused one person to look a little deeper, then that's fantastic. Yeah. And if anybody wants to do a follow up to this and like get up on a panel and everyone talk about it, um, then I think that would be fun too. So just let me know if you if you enjoyed this show, thumbs up. If you give it a thumbs down, it's still going to be like an interaction. So my haters keep leaving thumbs down because YouTube likes that too. So, um, Lori, thank you for coming on. And you know which show we need to do? You know, with the graveyard. That yeah. yeah, yeah, we need to do that one. And yeah. do well, you know, you know, Kat, I've thought about, I've thought about that, and here some of the neighbors have told me that there's a homeless person living in the in the cemetery, and I haven't, I haven't seen it. Other people have seen this person, but I've been kind of like, I've been a little spooked just by that, <laughs> not by, not by what's in, you know. What's dead in the cemetery, but what's <laughs> alive in the cemetery? Yeah, right? it, you know what? Yeah. That's why we yeah. all joke that the the dead are much more yeah. like than the living. I'm afraid of the living, not the dead. Yeah, exactly. Really exactly. afraid of the dead. Hey, witchy! Oh, <laughs> you just got a hum, and we're getting off. We'll plan a show on an, when you have a day off. And we can come on and and do a topic, and that would be that would be fun. So, um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to contact me or Albert or Lori. Um, and if y'all want to do a follow up to this, if you have questions, let me know, and we'll do that too. What I'm going to do with the serial killer thing is I want to be able to do like just straight up paranormal. So I'm going to do the serial killer show at like every two weeks versus once a week. Cause that can be a little hard on people 
like because it's intense. Yeah. Uh, so every other week, I'm going to do a different person like we talked about. And then like this next week, you're going to see like a bunch of just straight up power stuff. So I think since I have only a little bit more time before Amber goes to band camp, I'm going to go do that jail that I took that one video of that is here. And um, one other like location, but I'm not going to say because <coughs> I don't want anybody showing up to it. So that one will have to be a surprise. But um, thank you guys for coming on panel. Oh, you're welcome, Kat. Thanks for letting us come on. Oh, well, and I do think this is a topic we're probably going to talk more about. So y'all be looking for a part two about soul contracts. Yeah. So, um, and, and I hope nobody nobody's offended by it. I mean, because it's not it's not trying to force, you know, anything on anybody. It's just kind no. of opening that door that if anybody has ever thought of these same kind of things that, you know, because I know there's there's a lot of people who do believe that that there's got to be more to this than just everything what? that we've been taught or you know, and. So, you know, why not go with it and, and try to figure it out? You know? Right. Absolutely. I mean, God, we have gone down some interesting paths together. All <coughs> all yeah. You know, um, we've done shows that have covered, oh my gosh, a lot of different things. But I'm into all of those things. So, I'm just glad you guys are on the journey with me because I really like y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey Ma. Yeah. It's oh, like a few, people, a few people are coming in and we're like going off. But <laughs> anyway, there will be more to come. And um, hopefully, you will come on panel again, Lori, because I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I gotta get used to it. You know, it's my first time. It's like kind of weird, but what do I, you're like? Wait a minute, I'm used to being in chat. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just excited. No one want to talk. <laughs> uh, but that, but that's okay. I, I, I think you will enjoy it. I think you'll yeah. enjoy it. So, um, I hope you guys have a good rest of your evening. You too, Kat. And, um, I love y'all. We love you too. And I will see y'all really soon. And thank you to everyone, of course. All right. Good night. All right. Night. Okay.